today. My goal is to gold cap every single one of you by helping you make meaningful gold for yourselves every single day. Just don't be like me and waste it all crafting free perk best in slot gear because I haven't gotten a single piece. And I've spent like 3 million coin. In my previous gold videos, everyone who followed them made crazy gains. And that's what we're here to do again today. So for the January update, I made this text guide with all the things I'm going to be going over today with special tips for every single one of them during the video. And the main goal behind this is to get you on track to making 10k gold per day. And if you gain anything from this, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe. We're on the glow up operation of the century. And we just hit 1k subs the other day. And that was awesome. My name's Clay Cedics, and we're running right into it. And don't forget to like the video. It's the only way YouTube knows I exist. First thing on the list is the meta. Everything revolving around the meta is going to go for a good price. And we're going to quickly go over buy orders for what you should be looking for. It's just like the other video about buy orders, except this one streamlined faster and better. This will be the lowest effort and the easiest way to make the most amount of gold in the least amount of time in the entire game because most people are just too lazy to do it. And we kind of future-proof this buy list by looking into the mutated dungeon patch and seeing what's going to be useful in the actual dungeons themselves and what's going to spike and what's already useful in PvP. So starting off, we have the Orchilium Void Gauntlet Charm and it's going to give us putrefying scream. Second one is Orchilium Ice Gauntlet Charm that's going to give rushing spike perk. Reinforced Archilium Great Axe Charms give Insatiable Gravity Well, and Reinforced Archilium Warhammer Charms give the Leeching Path of Destiny. Now that we're done with the Archilium stuff, we're going to go into the Reinforced Steel Warhammer Charms, which gives Sundering Shockwave, and the Reinforced Steel Rapier Charms, which gives Sundering Your Post. Well, it doesn't look like this one's huge up front. It is a 28x on your money, and this is how you should be looking to do it. Multiplying your money by any means necessary. Times 2 is better than 0. And this is times 28. And the same goes for the Steel Musket Charms for Powder Burn, the Steel Bow Charms for Enfeebling Poison Shot, and the Steel Spear Charms for the Bleed on Coop. And finally, the last one. You thought I was done with Orchilium? You were not Ori chilling because it's the Orchilium Hatchet Charms for Refreshing Torrent. By ordering any of these and any other thing that can multiply your money will always be worth it. And these are just the ones that always have a decent price because of the amount of people using the weapon and how insane some of these perks are always end up driving up their price. The only exception might be the Life Staff Charm on your server. It varies per servers that I check. Sometimes it's good, and even on my server, it's not the best because there's just not enough life staff users. And yes, I know it's Orichalcum. I just say Orchilium to piss most of you off at this point because of the last time we made an Orchilium video. It just, it just resonated with me. But on top of these craft mods, you also have things like Iron Guardsman Insignias, Arcane Embroideries. Both Con and Int are the majority of the meta right now, and they have the highest prices compared to things like Iron Battle Medals because the more meta something is, the higher price it is. That being said, the next two weapons that are going to come out, the Blunder Bussy and the Great sword are both strength based, so who knows what's going to be the next big thing. But off that, we're going to go into the raw farming section. We're going to start with chest runs. And chest runs are my favorite farm in the entire game because the entry level is so simple and the bots can't ruin it. You only need to get like 33% luck, and that is insanely easy just by buying 2.8% luck. You're off the market. It's abundant right now, and it's going to let you farm the charms, the trophies, and the storage chests. And I'm going to emphasize the storage chest because for some reason, a bunch of trophy Andes decided to not read the storage chest part of this video and really flack me for it, which was kind of hilarious. I'm not going to lie to you. But this is the rotation map you should use for Weavers. It only takes like 30 minutes. You have movement speed buffs and it's going to give us all that tier three and four loot, which does include the storage chest, the trophies and the charm. And as you can see, the better storage chests are still worth a ton of money and were always worth more than the majority of the trophies that even came from this run. Now the same goes for the Morningdale chest run, but it can give us tier five loot. And that's really where we're going to start making money on these trophies. And if I'm feeling extra spicy, I'll run Weavers into the Morningdale route and then reset back into the Weavers run because supply chests only have a one hour cooldown. So you can basically spam them. Just remember, these are heavy RNG runs and you aren't guaranteed anything. But averaged out over about 100 runs, I was making about 5,000 gold per hour. But we also have one more higher tier one, which is the Solo Shattered Mountain run. You can get good expertise gains here if you're below like 560-ish. And this is where you also really want to loot all the small chests because they have the chance to drop the Orchilium Charms. And finally, the last chest run, and this is a Zerg route because uh, for some reason AGS decided to make the, the mobs stare at the boxes. So you need a group of people to do this one. I know this is a solo guide, but this is easily the best way to get your expertise up and the best way to get the most amount of chests the fastest. I've duoed most of these with my friend Divine before, and you can get almost all the large chests without the bosses staring at them. I really miss solo chest runs, man. 
But as you can see, there's a ton of chest runs. And just as a reminder, it is heavy RNG. So there is a chance that if you have bad luck, you're just not going to get anything. And for me, the lowest level chest runs are the most worth it because it requires the least am amount of functioning brain power. And that's how I like to do it. Just zero brain power, all all ham just go but now for my farmer boys these all fluctuate in value like crazy because every single patch amazon kind of changes what's good and what's bad but the final product is always very stable for every single one of these in my opinion and is the most consistent way to make decent gold per hour as long as you can fend the bots off by possibly trapping them in some tents with some friends because bots can't go past tents for some reason starting with weaving the best fiber runs are in windsward and morningdale and while i'm not the biggest fan of windsward just because of how heavily botted it is it is easily one of the better routes in the game because it takes you through so many high quality resources and moats while you're gathering the hemp but the reason i like morningdale so much more is because you get so much hemp and silkweed nodes at the same time and it passes you over multiple wire fiber nodes and it's just so abundant that no matter what you're almost guaranteed to at least get 2,000 fiber per hour, which doesn't sound very good when you could be getting like 12,000 fiber per hour if you have the whole route to yourself, which is absolutely insane. Now for wire fiber, the best route is hands down Eden Grove. The problem is that it's overbotted and overplayered, so it's almost impossible to get the spot to yourself. So the other good spots I found were in Reek Water, and this lets you reset and go grab some hemp and some more chillium while you're waiting for the wire fiber to respawn. And my last spot is an ebb and scale. But my problem with this route is there isn't really anything else to go gather while you're waiting for the wire fiber to respawn. So it's more of like an alt F4 and come back in 10 minutes kind of thing. Now we're going to get into like the woodworking aspect of things. You can literally go outside, chop young trees and make charcoal and actually make bank per hour. That's a thing. And that's why bots are so heavily just clear cutting forests. But at the end of the day, if we're really just looking towards Ironwood, which is the most value, its problem is that it has bots or unflagged players just camping the shit out of it, which really sucks. But the two best rotations have the least amount of bots because there's so many high level mobs that actually just kill the bots off, which is actually pretty nice. So starting off from this like shattered into the top of Eden Grove route, this is a great route. I love running this one because it also takes you through a couple of chests at the same time. You know how much I love the chests. And then there's one in this like southern part of Eden Grove. And this is actually, in my opinion, the best ironwood route because the trees are constantly respawning and there's a lot of them now for orichalcum we have the og spot now i know scorch mines is no longer the place it used to be with the amount of muskets but people are still death running this place to get orchilium because it is just the best spot for it and that is just as simple as it gets but coming into the next patch tentacles are getting nerfed and we end up with a couple extra decent spots to go so we'll start off with mirk guard and if you have somebody pulling the mobs for you it's actually really easy to get the orchilium and you can just split it with them 50 50 and still make bank because not a lot of people actually do this one and especially on dead hours i see these nodes up all the time but the trench of doom is where that big tentacle nerf is going to come into play because most builds are actually going to be able to run through this trench kill the tentacles and actually gather the orchilium underneath them this is probably going to be my orchilium farming route and i think it might actually be the best one but now we're on the final stretch and i'm just going to give you three quick rotations because all three of the hides are super valuable the best raw hide rotation is these pigs here they are absolutely insane. They give a ton and they're just outside the town so you can quickly walk back and come back out. The best thick hide rotation is pigs again, but just in Morningdale. And it also takes you through a couple of high value nodes like ironwood, wire fiber, silkweed, and hemp. And while Ironhide has a few over farm spots up in Eden Grove, there is another best spot that I found that I love even more. And it's these tigers down in Ebon Scale Reach. They also double dip with Orchilium ore, and they really make a crazy farm where you're getting a bunch of legendary materials on top of the iron hide. And while most of these resources are really good just to sell raw, if you craft them up to like the infused silk, the infused leather, the word calcum ingots, the ironwood planks, they're going to be worth so much more. Especially if you go gather all this stuff yourself, you're just going to be making way more money. Oh, and before I forget, the one of the prereqs for this is to get maxed out trophies. Do not sleep on these. Having that extra luck actually goes a really long way. Now, for all my real motherfuckers that always stay until the end of the video, you know I love you the most. And your final big tip is anything to do with mutated dungeons is going to skyrocket in price because just like in Mythic Plus, everybody's going to need to min max us to get to the top tier. All your best players are going to want to get that 625 gear. So you're looking at tier 5 gemstone dust, oak bomb flesh, owning stones, all the trophies for ancient corrupted and angry earth, and all the coatings to go along with those too. All these are going to spike after the patch insanely hard. And usually they're going to be the highest price on like Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday and tank off on the weekend when more people are farming them. So if you are buying low and selling high, buy the DM. That's it.
It's been a while since we've done a gold farming guide, but this one should be updated for the entirety of this next mutated dungeon patch, and it should stay relevant for the entire thing. And on top of that, we will be doing another gold guide for when the next big patch comes out. And I do hope you all stay beautiful, blessed, and safe out there because I want to see you in the next one. Boop.